This video is going to look at how we use Excel when we have a savings scenario. Now your book has the formulas to do this work by hand and you can do that but it's so much easier to use Excel. Um, on the test you probably don't have enough time to do everything by hand. So it is highly recommended that you figure out the FV and the PMT functions that we're going to be talking about in Excel because they're great functions and they really do make your life easier. And you can use these functions on all of your Connect homework and on all of your labs and everything that we do in this course. So this FV function, we use it anytime we're talking about savings. Its input, we will tell Excel the APR, which is our annual interest rate, N, which is the number of times per year that you are paid interest. Y is the number of times per year. PMT is a monthly contribution you're putting towards your savings account. And then P is the principal, so whatever money started in that account. And the biggest thing about this function, you've got to put it in exactly as it's written, and I'll show you how we do that down here in Excel, but you've got to have the negative signs in front of the PMT and the P. Probably 90% of the time, if someone makes a typo, it's because they forgot those negative signs. And on your test and on the final exam, we will print this FV function just like it's here in Excel on your test paper. So you do not have to memorize this, but you do need to remember how do we take it from this formula form that we see up here in Excel and get it inputted into Excel so that you can use it. So the way we do this is we make a chart where we list out all of the inputs. So APR, N, Y, PMT, P, and the bottom it'll be our FV value. And so these inputs are the exact order they appear in the function. We have APY first, or APR, then we have N, then we have Y, then PMT and P. So you don't have to remember any special order, it's just the order that they appear. So for this FV function, we're going to type in our formula. So equals FV parenthesis, and then cell reference the values exactly as they are written in the function. So cell reference the spot for APR divided by N comma N times Y comma negative PMT comma negative P close parenthesis. So we're just putting this FV function into Excel using cell references for each of our different values. And once we get this in, the problems are pretty easy to work from here on. And it's saying divide by zero for now, that's fine. It'll go away once we start actually plugging in numbers. So it says Ted puts $2,500 in a savings account. So that's his principal. That's his initial amount. We'll put it in here for P. That pays 2.5% interest. So you can put 2.5% or you can type it as a decimal, whatever you prefer. Compounded monthly. So monthly means that he gets paid interest once a month, which is 12 times a year. So that will tell us that our N is 12. How much money will he have after 18 months? Well, Y is always in years. 18 months is one and a half years. So we need to put 1.5 in for Y. So after 18 months, Ted will have $2,595.43. So Excel put all of those values in for us and gave us our answer. All right, so the beautiful thing about this function is we've got to do two more parts. I'm just going to drag this across. So we've got places to work. So that way we don't lose the fact that for our first problem, our answer was 2,595.43. So that was how much he'll have after 18 months. The next part says, when will he double his money? Well, he started with 2,500. Doubling would mean that he has $5,000. But that's the amount of money that he has down here. It's asking when. So it's asking for a time. So that means we're going to need to goal seek to solve for Y because that will tell us how long it will take for him to double. So I'm just going to highlight the Y to remind us that that's what we're going to be goal seeking for. So everything else is the same. 2.5% interest compounded monthly means he gets paid interest once a month or 12 times a year. And then he's starting with $2,500. So we want to see when does it double. So I'm going to click on that cell with the equation. Data. What if analysis, goal seek, we want it to double to $5,000 by changing the years. And this will tell us how long it will take for him to get to $5,000. So when we do that, we see that it's going to take him, ooh, 27.75 years. That's a really horrible savings plan. You probably don't want to put your money in this account to try to reach financial freedom because you're going to take 27, almost 28 years to double your money to $5,000. That's really not a good plan, but that does tell Ted when he will double his money. 
So the next problem says a different account offers 2.3% interest compounded daily. Well, daily means that he gets paid interest once a day, which is 365 days a year. So n is going to be 365 to represent that he gets paid interest um, once a day. So it says, is this a better account? So there's a couple different ways we could do this, but honestly, probably the easiest thing is to do the same numbers that we did for part one and just change the interest rates. So we saw in part one, after 18 months, which is one and a half years, Ted would have $2,595. Well, let's see what happens here after one and a half years if he puts in that $2,500. Remember, the hashtags or the pound signs means the column's too narrow, so widen it up. So after 18 months, he's going to have $2,587.75, which is a little bit less than what he would have had at the 2.5% compounded monthly. So no, this is not a better account because he's going to end up with less money than he did with the first option. All right, let's look at some different practice problems for this. So same formula, we've got our FE function. Remember, this will be printed on the test. You've got to be able to get it from this form up here into Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just list out our variables in the order they appear in the function. And so then we put in our function equals FV parenthesis APR divided by N comma N times Y comma negative PMT comma negative P. And we've got a couple different questions. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over some spots so that we have places to work our different problems. All right, so it says Brenda put $3,000 in an account. So that's her principal, $3,000. And she noticed that she had $4,000 after five years. So why is five? She did not pay attention to the interest rate when she opened the account, but she knows that it paid interest monthly. So monthly interest means it's paid once a month, which is 12 times a year. What was her interest rate? All right, so we're trying to figure out what was her interest rate. That means we need to goal seek for the APR, which is her interest rate. So I'm going to start by clicking down where my formula is. Data, what if analysis, goal seek. She knows that she's going to have $4,000. And we're trying to figure out what was that APR. So we do the goal seek and we see that her APR, I'm going to get it as a percent to two decimal places just so it looks a little bit better. Her APR was 5.77% in this account. All right, so it says now that Brenda knows her interest rate, so that 5.77%, and this account is being paid monthly, so it's 12 times a year, she decides to take this account that currently has $4,000 in it. So remember she had $4,000 after five years, so she's got $4,000. And now she's going to start adding $150 a month to the account. So that's what this PMT spot is for. We haven't used it yet, but PMT is a monthly payment or a monthly contribution that you make into the savings account. So she put $4,000 in initially, or she had $4,000. Now she's going to start adding $150 a month. And remember all these hashtags mean the cell's too narrow, so let's widen that up. All right, so we have $4,000 initially, $150 a month, same interest rate, compounded monthly. So how much will she have in five more years? So five years later, Brenda is going to have, well, that's a pretty good savings, $15,737.89. Okay, so just one thing to note here. Um, this function, it tells us the amount of money we have it doesn't necessarily tell us how much interest we earned. So if we wanted to figure out our interest, what we need to do is we need to take our account balance at the end and subtract what we paid into it. So the amount of interest you earned, it's the difference between what you ended up with versus what you put into the account. So like for this first problem, we ended up with $4,000 and we put in $3,000. So the interest earned for this one would be the $4,000 minus the $3,000 or an earned interest of $1,000. That one's maybe, I don't want to say obvious, but um, pretty straightforward. We just take what we ended up with minus what we contributed to get the interest earned. 
that's a little bit more involved, though, if we're putting money in on a monthly basis. So if we wanted to figure out the interest earned for this problem, we would take that 15737.89, and we would need to subtract the $4,000 that she put in, and we would also need to subtract the $150 that she put in, but she put this in 12 times a year for five years. So we need to subtract off the 4,000 initially and subtract off the fact she put $150 in 12 times a year for five years. So when we do that subtraction, we see that she earned $2,737.89. So again, interest earned is just whatever you ended up with minus whatever you put into it. All right, so one more question on this set. So we actually didn't need this last spot. We just need one more. So it says, how much should she add to the account each month if she wants to have $20,000 for a down payment on a house in five years? All right, so it's asking how much should she add? That's our PMT. We can assume everything else is the same. So she's starting with $4,000. She has a 5.77% interest rate for 12 years, and we're looking for five years down the road. But doing this, as it is, it's only $5,000. We saw if she was putting in $150 a month, it'd only be $15,000. We want to get it to $20,000. So we need to goal seek this formula to $20,000 by changing her monthly contribution so that we can see how much she needs to contribute monthly to get to $20,000. So we start in the cell with the equation. We go to data, what if analysis, goal seek. We want our future value to be $20,000, and we're going to be editing or changing the amount of money she puts in each month. So it goes through its little thing, and we see that she needs to put in $211.45 each month, in addition to the $4,000 she already had, to get $20,000 saved up after five years. 